ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستغفره ونتوب إليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مدل له ومن يدلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا محمدا عبده ورسوله يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون يا أيها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحدة وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والأرحام إن الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم عمالكم ويوفي لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما أما بعد فإن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها فكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له إوجا الحمد لله رب العالمين All praise is due to Allah the Lord of all the worlds All praise is due to Allah who has guided us to this path that we would not have been able to guide ourselves had not Allah guided us. Alhamdulillah. Subhanallah. The one Allah chooses to guide, there is no one to lead us to guide, there is no one to lead us straight. And the one Allah leads us astray, there is no one to guide. Allah Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Kabira. Allah has guided us to this way, brothers and sisters. And He's made us lights, as we recently mentioned. He's made us lights to guide others. Unfortunately, many sincere Muslims who pray and fast feel they have nothing to offer to the wider society. Or, a more optimistic view, they have something to offer, but there is no one who is willing to accept it. After all, people look at Muslims, or so some people rationalize as violent people as barbaric people, as backward people, as people who are obscurantist in their view of things. So who wants to listen to me? Perhaps there are many who would not be guided by your words, but you might find the light you possess to be irresistible. In other words, sometimes guidance or error are not related to rational processes. As Imam Ghazali mentioned, faith is a light that Allah cast into the heart of the believer. And this was after a lifetime spent rationalizing and trying to understand at an intellectual level various proofs for God or various arguments for this or that aspect associated with the divine. Then concluding 
It's all about the life that we have, brothers and sisters. It's not necessarily about a superior idea. Islam has many superior ideas. Islam is, is amazing. We recently read the report of Oxfam that 62 individuals control more wealth than half of humanity. The top 62 and wealthy individuals control more wealth than the bottom half of humanity. What does Islam say about that? Islam says many things about that. And we might think as Muslims we're too weak or too poor to distribute enough wealth amongst people to even that divide. Now it's not about how much wealth we have, brothers and sisters, it's about how much light we have. It's about how much light. We mentioned recently in another venue that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, He states, Allah is the light of the heavens and the earth. And He described His messenger. There has come to you from Allah a light, referring to the Messenger, as Imam Tabri mentioned. He means by the light Muhammad, by which Allah illuminated the truth. And he describes the Quran. So Allah describes himself as light. And of course, that's an incomparable light. And he describes his prophet as light, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he described his scripture as light. Those who believe in him, the prophet, and they magnify him. So azaruhu can mean nasaruhu, but then he says nasaruhu. So wa'adhaluhu. They magnify him. Ask yourself, brothers and sisters, and we've left Rabi al Awal and the time of mentioning the virtue of the Prophet, وسلم, some people celebrating his coming into the world, others commemorating, others ignoring seeing that of no special significance to be commemorated or celebrated, whatever the case may be, ask yourself a simple question. Do you magnify the Prophet Wasallam? Do you extol his greatness? Do you hold him to be great? Great enough to tell people about him. Great enough to follow his example, great enough to want to walk in his footsteps, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, great enough to want to defend him against the lies and slanders and distorted, distortion directed at him, and not defending him. Some people might say, well, I'm not a writer, I'm not a scholar. No, the best defense is to live as he lived. The best defense is to love as he loved. The best defense is to show the mercy that he showed, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The best defense is to approach children the way he approached children. The way he approached Al-Hasan was when Hussein, wa Umama, and the other children from the Sahaba. The best, the best defense is to make sure your household is like his household and not just some uh, mentioning a litany of his virtues. He, he mended his own clothes, he repaired his own sandal, he swept his own room out. Are we repairing our own clothes or the domestic equivalent? Are we mending our own sandals? Are we sweeping our own room? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
the best defenses to have the patience he had, to have the forbearance he had, to have, to strive to have, we'll never attain it, but to strive to have the strength of, of the connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he has. That's the best defense of the Prophet sallallahu Because if we do those things as a community, and there are millions of us in this country, and over a billion worldwide, there will be a qualitative change in the nature of this world. There will be a qualitative change in the nature of this world. You're an employer. Treat your, treat your employees the way he treated his servants, the equivalent of his employees, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. La ilaha illallah, that's the best defense. Wa'adlamuhu, wa nasaruhu, and help him. In the way that we just mentioned, if we magnify him, we will help him. We will defend his honor. We will stand up for his honor. We will repulse and respond to the slanders and distortions against him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But the point, and then, And they follow, follow the light that was revealed with them. That light is the Qur'an. That light is the Qur'an. And then the, the knowledge of the, of the religion that comes from those three lights. From the light of Allah that shines through His Messenger and shines through the Qur'an. His, which contains His eternal speech. What is that knowledge called? When Imam al-Shafi rahimahullah was complaining of his memory becoming dim and he wrote a couple couplets. Shakautu illa wa ki in su'a hifdi fa arshadani illa turk al-ma'asi fa akhbarani bi anna al-ilma nur nurullahi la yuhda lil-asi He complained to Waki, his teacher, my memory's getting a little dim. He had to read something twice instead of once to memorize it. If only we could have that problem. <laughs> so he instructed me to leave off all sinning. فَأَرْشَدَنِي إِلَى تُرْكِ الْمَعَاسِي And he thought and thought and thought. And you know what his sin was? He remembered, he was walking in the marketplace. He saw a lady's heel, the heel of her foot from under her, the bottom of her dress. And he repented from that, and his memory came back to strength. But the point here, فَأَخْبَرَنِي بِأَنَّ الْإِلْمَ نُورِ He instructed me that knowledge is a light. نُورُ اللَّهِ لَا يُهْدَى لِلْعَصِي The light of Allah that he doesn't give to a sinner. Knowledge is light. The Qur'an is light. The Prophet is light. And brothers and sisters, all of us are meant to be lights. All of us are meant to be lights. We are the ones who illuminate the darkness. We are the ones through following those lights provide lights for humanity. We are the ones and so we should be praying that Allah makes us light as the Prophet ﷺ taught us. When he made a prayer, it's a prayer He's making for himself, but he's also making it to instruct his ummah. <coughs> and so he prayed, Allah maj'al fi qalbi nuran, put a light in my heart. And we should all pray for that. Wa fi basari nuran, and in my, my vision, put light in my vision. Wa fi sam'i nuran, and put light in my hearing. Wa ala lisani nuran, and put light on my tongue. وَعَنْ يَمِينِ نُورًا Light to my right وَعَنْ يَسَارِ نُورًا And light to my left وَبَيْنِ يَدَيَّ نُورًا And light before me وَمِنْ خَلْفِ نُورًا And light behind me وَمِنْ فَوْقِ نُورًا And light above me وَمِنْ تَحْتِ نُورًا And light beneath me Allah مَجْعَنِّي نُورًا Allah make me a light So we should be praying that Allah makes us a light and makes, makes light in our heart, in our hearing, in our seeing, in our speech to our right, our left, before us, behind us, above us, beneath us. So that we can be guides, brothers and sisters. So as I said, it's not about how much wealth we possess in terms of making a contribution to address these gross inequalities of wealth. 
It's about how much light we possess so we can direct people to start thinking in different ways. This situation is a direct result of people thinking in certain ways about wealth. <clears throat> it's a direct result. It's a direct result of people being distanced from the teachings of the prophets. Be that at the time of Christ, who the Christians refer back to, being distanced from the teachings of Christ, who forbade usury. The Catholic Workers' Movement, started by Dorothy Day, the whole movement was built on taking seriously the prohibition of usury because this mid-20th century movement in the United States saw that most of the economic problems in this society were rooted in usury. Religious teachings forbade that. Religious teachings encouraged charity. And you say, well, those billionaires are charitable. Bill Gates gives away $2 billion a, a, a year. Okay, if we accept that his, the reports that he has $60 billion, and a lot of that is invested in these hedge funds, and say he's getting a 10% return, that's six billion, and he gave away two billion, he still profited four billion. Where's the charity in that? Where's the charity in that? It's a direct result of people being distanced from the teaching of God. So we have to instruct people not give your wealth away, that might address the problem for a day or two. But we want a long-term resolution. Don't look at the wealth as your wealth. So what does Allah tell us? Allah tell us, tells us, Give them from the wealth of Allah that he's given you. This is God's wealth, it's not your wealth. You didn't bring it into the world with you and you're not going to take it out, with the world, out of the world with you. And you know that. So it was a result of people being oriented and moved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to put that wealth in your hand as a trust. It's Allah's wealth. It is not your wealth. You're a trustee. You're a trustee of the wealth. And being a trustee, you have to honor the rights and responsibilities that come with the trusteeship. And amongst the greatest of those rights, those half who have less wealth than those 62 individuals, those almost 4 billion people, in their wealth that they're custodians of. Because Allah, they say, render unto Caesar that, the, that which is Caesar's in the Bible, right? And render unto God that which is God. Islam says Caesar and what Caesar possesses belongs to God. And so at the end of the day, it's all service to God. That's all from Caesar and from those under the authority of Caesar. And for, for Caesar's wealth and the modern day equivalents, Hakkum Ma'lum, there's a well defined right. Those who ask and those whose circumstances prevent them from even asking. They shouldn't have to ask, in other words because the right they have is recognized. That's what we offer the world, brothers and sisters. That's what we offer the world, a different way of seeing reality. But it starts with us seeing reality different. It starts with us even recognizing the nature of reality. And that there is no reality without Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is no reality without God. 
That's the first most fundamental concept, idea associated with understanding reality. It's Tawheed. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. And when we acknowledge that, when we recognize that, we understand that the wealth in reality is Allah's wealth. The rights that the poor people have were rights established by Almighty God. The responsibilities that the wealthy have are rights established by Almighty God. Looking at things differently. And what shaitan is trying to do is to remove Allah Ta'ala from the equation. And when we remove Allah from the equation, then we're left with base human behavioral patterns. Evil is not a function of a political system. We have to understand that. Economic justice is not a function of a political system. Right, the capitalist as the emerging bourgeoisie came to power, what did they say? We're going to create an equal distribution of wealth that the kings and the monarchs have not created. They hoard the wealth and then they pass it down and they claim that the power, the authority, the wealth they had is a God-given right, the divine right of kings. We're going to change that and the suffering that results, we're going to change it. And so what do we have? We have capitalism. And the 62 individuals having more wealth than the bottom half of humanity is the direct result of capitalism. And so the communists came and they said, oh, we're going to be just. We're going to end the capitalist state and the associated exploitation. And what happened? They were just as or corrupt. The, the inequalities was just as great as in the under the capitalists. Look at the old Soviet Union, the Communist Party, and oh, look at Communist China today. That's still their name. Look how much money the, the heads of the party have and the business people who are loyal to them. Look at how much money they have and look at what the average Chinese factory worker has. And it's communist China. Just as corrupt, just as great inequalities as the capitalists. And the same is true in the old Soviet Union. It's brothers and sisters, it's not about the system. So we have an Islamic state. We have the Islamic Republic of Iran. Look at somebody like, we won't say any names. A school teacher who became the prime minister and enriched himself and his whole family. Iranians here know who I'm talking about. Just as much corruption. Look at the Islamic State. Look at the political oppression in the so-called Islamic State. People being killed indiscriminately. People's wealth being usurped. The, 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 the fruits of lifetimes of labor being burned and bulldozed and smashed. Where's the justice in that? It's not about the system. It's about the human being himself or herself. And change doesn't come until we change ourselves. And the meaning of that's from bad, from good to bad. But it works the other way also. We have to change, and we change who we don't see ourselves as just a compilation of blood and flesh. When we see ourselves as light, when we see ourselves in non-material terms, and by moving ourselves away from the material, we can see ourselves in spiritual terms, and in seeing ourselves in spiritual terms, we can envision the, the connection we have, not a physical connection, with our Lord at a spiritual level, as a reflection of that light. This is what Tana al-Badru 
the light of Allah, symbolized by the sun, which is the source of all light, to be clear, was reflected in its most perfect human form by the Prophet Sallallahu just as the full moon, the batter, is the most perfect reflection of the light of the sun. And then the stars are guides. The stars are lesser lights that guide. When do they provide their guidance? They provide their guidance when the, when the better is gone. Because when the better is there, the light of the full moon is so bright, the light of the stars is drowned out. So when the Prophet was here, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he was a guide for everyone who chose to be guided. There is no choice. But when he's gone, now the stars are visible. Now the stars are visible. But if the stars are extinguished, what's there to guide? So brothers and sisters, don't see yourself as some uh, homo economicus. I don't know if that's a Latin word. Just as this economic actor don't see yourself as homo sapien, just as this thinking being. See yourself as light. See yourself at a spiritual level. And that's what you have to offer the world, light. That's what you have to offer the world. And that has nothing to do with your political status, political power or lack thereof. It has nothing to do with your economic status, economic power, or lack thereof. It has nothing to do with whether people love you or hate you. It has to do with the state of your heart. And that's something we have the ability to control. أقول قولي هذا استغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمنين يقوم استغفر الله Brothers, and sisters, once we understand and see ourselves in different terms, we realize we have a mission. We have a mission to illuminate the sky with those bright stars. We have a mission to be guides for people. We have a mission. And once we realize we have a mission, then we realize we can't be bogged down with the petty, mundane concerns that other people have who don't have this mission. So when the Prophet's wives, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, they started bickering and they wanted a little more of this, a little more of that, what did Allah Ta'ala reveal? Ya Nisa and Nabi Lastunda ka ahadim min an Nisa. Oh wives of the Prophet, you're not like other women. If they're bickering about having this or that from the dunya or not having this or that, that's not your concern. And we're not like other people. We shouldn't see ourselves like other people. We are the ones who are the followers of the last Prophet sent to humanity for the guidance of humanity. That being the case, we can't be concerned about this petty dunya affairs people are concerned with. Do I have the latest car or not? Do I have the latest bit of wardrobe that's fashionable? All my clothes are too baggy. I thought Muslim clothes are supposed to be baggy. I know, but the dunya says it has to be skinny now. Are my skinny jeans skinny enough? They go on too easy. Something must be wrong. They have new ones you can spray paint on. Oh, I'm getting those. La hawla wa la quwata illa billah. That's the status of the people who are sent to follow the last and to take up the mission of the last messenger sent to humanity. Brothers and sisters, we're better than that. 
Brothers and sisters, you're better than that. We don't have time for petty concerns, especially when people are trying to wipe religion, not just Islam, religion, from the face of the earth. So there's no source of hope. There's no source of guidance. There's no source of looking at reality from a non-materialistic viewpoint. We have work to do, brothers and sisters. As we said, it starts with simple things within our various realms and capacities, but it starts with us seeing ourselves as something other than what the world is trying to make us see ourselves as. ونعوذ بك من العجز والكسل ونعوذ بك من الجبن والبخل ونعوذ بك من غلبة الدين وكهر الرجال اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معاصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا بها جنتك ومن اليقين ما يهون علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا بأسماءنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرنا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عدانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا أرحم الراحمين وعاف عنا وفي لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصر على القوم الكافرين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم يا أيها الذين من اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون أكم الصلاة يرحم لي ويرحمكم الله